Welcome to Kevin's chat room. Today, we're going to try to decipher UF's reopening plan for fall 2020. This video was shot on July 1st. Please check the official website for the most updated COVID-19 news from UF. On June 23rd, UF's reopening plan was approved by the Florida Board of Governors. The entire plan is 15 pages long, so I'll try to save you some time and summarize it for you. By the way, I just received an email saying they will release an updated plan along with the full schedule of classes on July 10th. So keep an eye on that as well. The fall semester is going to start on August 31st, and the plan was made with the intention that students will return in large numbers back to Gainesville. Since the state of the pandemic is still evolving, the so UF's plan may be adjusted as we move forward. So the plan actually mentioned students will be arriving on campus from virtually every county in the state of Florida, every state in the nation, and countries on almost all continents. So containing the spread of virus is certainly challenging for a school this size. So the plan has three main components and several subcomponents. So they are healthy campus and community environment, the screen, test, and protect initiative, and academic program delivery. And there are detailed subcomponents in each main part. So I'm going to try to break it down one by one. So let's first talk about healthy campus and community environment. First of all, in the policies and procedures part, they said they want to make remote learning options to be available for most students. However, colleges and departments will decide the best mode of delivery for a particular course. So make sure you keep an eye on emails from your college about certain courses in your major. You have also plans to offer additional personal protective equipments for faculties who will be in regular contact with students in enclosed space. And UF is gonna strictly follow the guidance from CDC regarding face covering and social distancing requirements. So as you can see, they already made some signs to remind people that they should wear facial coverings, especially indoors. So that's probably gonna be one of the major changes when we return to campus, that everyone needs to have a facial covering with them. And also when it comes to indoors, they may implement path of travel or schedule of traffic to minimize close contact. Last but not least, hand sanitizers will be widely deployed across campus facilities. Next up, let's talk about campus events. So they didn't give too much details about sporting events, but they did mention that university athletics will comply with the UF, NCAA, and SEC standards. And decisions about intercollegiate competition will come later and be made in conjunction with NCAA and SEC. And other campus events will be suspended through the end of June, and the resumption will be phased and gradual. So regarding student life on campus, they said that all student groups, including sororities and fraternities, must submit a plan to maintain health and safety. And UF is trying really hard to develop a campus culture that wearing facial coverings and social distancing should be encouraged. And personal responsibility is essential to prevent the spread of the disease. Next, let's talk about on-campus housing. So on-campus resident halls will be open in the fall. The only significant change is that the 111 triples on campus will only house two people. Also, there's gonna be modified visitation policies and enhanced cleaning protocols. So if a student living on campus tests positive for COVID-19, they will be quarantined in one of several locations on campus for 14 days. And during that time, students will be provided with food, essential items, counseling, and other services as needed. And each sororities and fraternities is required to submit a plan regarding housing, dining, and cleaning protocols. Now let's talk about dining. So the maximum capacity will be adjusted with furniture and queuing area adjustments. And self-service stations will be discontinued. And service where social distancing cannot be practiced will be closed until further notice. And finally, outdoor seatings and increased ventilations will be made available when possible. And the last topic for this part is about student health. The plan says that the Student Healthcare Center will remain as the front line for students with healthcare related issues. And it will provide comprehensive care for student needs related to COVID-19 diagnosis. And it will connect students with UF healthcare professionals regarding self-quarantine procedures. Now let's talk about the screen, test, and protect initiative. So the plan includes screen and test, trace, protect, and prevent. So faculties and students don't have to pay for any part of its service, including testing. 
and there is actually a 10 station drive through testing site on campus that's operational right now. And UF has actually been screening and testing employees and faculties since beginning of May. And at the moment, most of the 29,000 faculty and employees have been screened, 16,874 have been tested, and 27 have been tested positive. All the students will actually go through the same screening assessment for risk factors. At-risk students will receive medical triage and COVID-19 testing. If a student tests positive, UF will reach out and provide anything they need, including temporary academic accommodations. And for contact tracing, they are cooperating with the Florida Department of Health. So the public health staff will work with the person to walk through who they've might been in contact with during the time frame while they might have been infectious. The staff will then warn the exposed contacts about their possible exposure, but they will not share any personal information about the person who tested positive. Definitely check out this website for more detailed information about the program. All right, last but not least, let's talk about academic program delivery. So the main goal of this component of the plan is ensuring academic progress, minimizing risks, and assuring stability. So UF will deliver instructions through face-to-face hybrid or online classes. So for online classes, there are actually two different types. One is called synchronize and the other one is asynchronize. I've actually taken both formats when we transitioned to online in uh, mid-March. So synchronized lectures are more like in-person classes. You need to attend a lecture at a certain time and the professor may or may not record a lecture. So you can potentially miss a class if you don't attend it in time. Also, professors may do some uh, in-class activities like learning catalytics or some sort of quiz. So make sure you keep an eye on that as well. An asynchronous class, on the other hand, offers more flexibility. It's all recorded lectures, so you can see it at any time. I wouldn't say one is better than the other. It all depends on your personal study habits. If you're very disciplined, you might find asynchronous class are a little better because they are more flexible. And if you are the type of person who doesn't watch lectures till one day before the exam, then synchronous class could be a better choice for you. So they're also planning for students to re-register in light of the current environment. And they basically said that for undergraduate students, if you wish to make your schedule to entirely online, it could be possible to do so. So for this part of the plan, my interpretation is they're not just gonna erase all your classes in the fall and ask you to redo the registration. That will be a lot of work for everyone. I think it's more like making some adjustments to your existing schedule, like some classes were in person and now they're online. So they were going to release an updated full schedule on July 2nd, but given the current surge in cases statewide, they decided to postpone it to July 10th to give us a more definitive guidance. And just a note for international students, normally we could only take a limited amount of online classes to maintain our legal student status. But in the fall, we can take as many online classes as we need. But we still need to uh, take at least 12 credits for undergraduate and nine for graduate students to remain uh, full-time status. Wait, are you saying that I can attend college in the US but stay at home uh, with my family in China? Let me check the flights real quick. Also, I already signed the lease for the fall and I kind of like my roommates. All right, my fellow Gators, I guess we're in this together. Last, there is a good news. Faculties are encouraged to design a course in a way that students will not have to return back to campus after Thanksgiving break. I would say that's probably the best part of the plan. All right, that was a lot to unpack. I'll end the video with some of my thoughts. So the current plan is more like a framework of how UF might operate in the fall, but we still have about two months until fall starts. I expect UF would roll out more detailed plans and communicate with us more frequently as we approach the end of August. So make sure you check your email regularly. I hope you and your family stay safe and healthy. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. First of all, in the policy and procedures per in the policy and procedures portion per procedure policy and procedures portion in the policy
Policies and Procedures Report. First of all, in the Policy and Procedures portion. Yes. 